Today, let's talk about special effects. Uh, for the midterm exam, I asked you to watch the short film Salt, and that one obviously had a lot of special effects. So there are, we can look at special effects from two different angles. Uh, why you want special effects and how do you do them? So uh, why would you want special effects in your movie? There are two main reasons. First, you want to show something that is impossible. You can't actually do it in real life, so you have to use some kind of trick to do it for your movie. Uh, so this, of course, encompasses uh, something as small as like somebody jumping across two buildings. Like if you watch a Mission Impossible movie with Tom Cruise, uh, some of the things that he does are not actually possible, even though they may look like maybe they're possible. Uh, they're in the most recent one, Mission Impossible Fallout. There's a scene where he jumps from one building to the next building. It looks like it's not that far, but it's actually impossible. He had to have some wires to help him. Uh, on the other side of the scale, the really impossible stuff, right? Monsters, like shots of different planets, things like totally fantasy kind of things. You obviously need special effects. But there's another reason why some movies have special effects, even if they're not fantasy movies, even if they do things that are all possible to do in real life. And that reason is for convenience. Some things you can actually do, it'll just cost you a lot of money and it will take you months and months to prepare. So instead of doing it the real way, you can use a special effect to figure out a trick uh, so that it looks like you're doing this, uh, but you're not really. So uh, for example, like if you uh, have a scene where there's a, an explosion. Now, of course, uh, the best way to do this is to actually blow the thing up. But in order to make an explosion look very good on camera, uh, you would have to add lots of different chemicals. You have to adjust the heat and the power and the color of the chemicals and the explosion. It's uh, much easier to have an explosion and then add special effects to that explosion later. So even if your movie isn't a fantasy, even if it's completely a realist movie, you can still consider whether or not there are some things you can improve by using special effects. So that's the why. Next is the how. How do you do special effects? And this is the exciting part. There are two main ways. One, you can do what are called in-camera special effects, which means it you do the thing for the camera. So the effect happens while you are shooting the movie. The other way is, of course, during post-production. After you finish filming the movie, then you go to a computer and you put things together, you draw things, you change things. Traditionally, filmmakers did not have cameras. No, filmmakers did not have computers. So especially for older movies, all of the effects were in-camera effects. So, for example, if you wanted to show a different background than existed in real life, maybe you would draw the background and then you would have the performers, uh, actors perform in front of the fake background. If you wanted to show to uh, make it seem like a character is about to fall off of a building, you might shoot it indoors with a drawing of the space under the building at an angle that makes it look realistic. There are many, many uh, old tricks that filmmakers used to make the audience believe that they were seeing something that they were not actually seeing. The earliest days of filmmaking were all about optical illusions, huanxiang. And filmmakers still use these old tricks today. Uh, first of all, because they're fun, but secondly, because it looks more realistic if uh, you trick the camera instead of changing the image after you shoot the image. So, for example, uh, in the movie The Tree of Life, 
there are shots of like the beginning of the universe and like stars and nebulas, Xingring, uh, things like that. Uh, they couldn't just use photographs from NASA because it's a movie and the things had to move. Uh, instead of going to a computer, what they did was they had a pool of water and they added oil and chemicals and colors and they they did things to the mixture until it looked like the stars, until it looked like uh, nebulas and things in outer space. And so when you shoot that image, because it looks real to the human eye, when you shoot it in a computer, it also looks real. Um, or like there is an animated movie called uh, Kubo and the Two Strings, and the story is a young kid fights monsters made out of paper. Instead of making these paper monsters on a computer, what the filmmakers did was they took thousands of pieces of paper and they actually made the paper monster. That way, when you shoot it on a camera, the camera is actually looking at a paper monster and it looks much more real. But sometimes, even if you do in-camera effects, you need to use a computer to sort of uh, cover up some of the mystery of how you did it. And the most obvious example here is uh, martial arts films, Wu Xiaopian, right? You have the heroes jumping around, flying through the air. Everybody is wearing a wire, but you never see the wires in the films because later on they use a computer to erase the wires from each image. Um, I actually, I just learned today, in the early days of uh, martial arts movies in Hong Kong, before they had computers, uh, they couldn't erase the wire. So how did they do it without showing the wires? They used very, very thin wires so that when the camera is shooting the image, the camera doesn't actually see the wires. But of course, that's more dangerous. If the wire is too thin, it might snap uh, and the actor might fall. So it's much safer to use a thicker wire or cable and then to erase it after the movie is shot. Um, there are other things uh, that you might need to use a computer to clean up afterwards. For example, sometimes, especially today during the COVID-19 era, uh, you can't shoot the same scene with everybody in the same room. Sometimes actor schedules don't fit Sometimes like you're missing some people or the budget is not enough or the schedule doesn't give you enough time to go everywhere. So, so uh, one thing that filmmakers today will do is they will create the same scene. They will shoot it with one actor and then they will shoot it with another actor and then they will put these two together to make one scene. But sometimes because you're shooting this on different days, maybe the color will be a bit different, maybe the lighting will be a bit different. And so in those cases, you will need to use digital effects to make sure the background and the two scenes look exactly the same. But then you have special effects that uh, you can only do with a camera or with a computer. Things that you often see like in a fantasy movie, in a science fiction movie, uh, things to do with like lights and electricity and like uh, magic, the so-called really cool things. Even in like a gunfight, people shooting guns at each other. If you've ever, I'm, I'm pretty sure in high school you've all had to fire a gun. Uh, for military training, but if you remember, if you sh when you shoot a gun, you don't actually see anything. If it's a powerful gun, maybe you see a blip of fire from the gun itself, but most of the time, uh, gunfire is not visual. So when you fire a gun for a movie, a lot of the time, most of the time, the bursts of fire, the light, the bullets, the small explosions, all of that is special effects. Uh, so when you use a computer to create special effects, the good thing is there's no limit to what you can do. In fact, one famous scholar of new media, Xing Meiti, has said that uh, film is not actually a realist 
medium. Film is an animated medium. From the beginning, uh, it's animation and hand drawings. Today, it's drawing digitally. And in the middle is a brief period of realistic film, but the core of film is actually animation. Uh, now, I personally, I don't really believe this, but you can see how influential digital effects have become so that someone very knowledgeable about cinema would think that uh, changing the image afterward is the standard thing to do. So if you can do whatever you want, the question then becomes, what will you do? Uh, some movies today do like too much. If you've seen the movie Cats, uh, where the actors are turned into cats and they sing and dance, and the one with Taylor Swift. That one uh, is doing too much. Of course, the backgrounds, most of them are digitally altered. And of course, uh, the actors had to wear like green suits uh, to perform. And then later on, the computer would add the cat visuals and imagery onto the actors. Um, but really, that movie kind of uh, screwed up its special effects. Because if you look at the background uh, B-roll footage, the original images from that production, uh, the, the suits that the actors are wearing, those are called motion capture suits, right? You look at the camera, uh, the suit is supposed to have like dots and markings on them so that when the imagery is put into the computer, the computer can recognize movement. This dot is going from A to B. The problem is the suits that the actors were wearing did not have dots on them. They were just wearing like regular green uh, outfits. Uh, so the digital effects team, they didn't add fur to the actors' images. They recreated the actors' images in the form of a cat. It took them much more work, uh, and it looks much more fake uh, because it's almost completely separated from what the actors were actually performing. So that's an example of doing too much digital work. Um, production companies like Marvel, they also do more digital work than they really need to. Like, yes, sure, superheroes flying around, uh, shooting like laser bolts or whatever Marvel does. Doctor Strange moving through different universes. Yeah, you have to use computers for that. But even in scenes where actors are just standing around and talking, Marvel now no longer cares about the production design, no longer cares about what's actually in the camera. As long as the actor is saying their lines, uh, Marvel will add everything else later. So if you've ever seen original footage of a Marvel movie, it's basically the actor is wearing a costume, sometimes not even a costume, the actor is wearing green, standing in uh, an environment that is entirely green. Uh, and all of the background images, all of the costumes, all, everything is a special effect that is added in afterwards. Uh, now, the, the good part of this is the freedom, but the bad part is the actor no longer has the freedom to improvise, to change things if the scene doesn't feel right. Um, it limits the actor's choices during the performance. So it ends up giving more control to the companies that make the movie instead of control to the artists who really care about the story and who care about the quality of what they're doing uh, in the performance and during the production. So why is this the case? Why are film companies now uh, doing more and more things on computer rather than in camera? Now, the one reason some people say is because it's cheaper. Right, you don't have to build everything. You can just draw it uh, later on the on the computer. But that's not actually true, because if you shoot it in camera, you only have to build it once. But if you create a special effect on the computer, you have to create those effects 
for every single shot throughout the movie. Movies are usually projected at 24 frames per second, which means every second there are 24 images. A typical movie is 90 minutes long. 90 minutes times 60 seconds times 24 images. My math is not very good, but that's a lot of work you have to do on the computer. And so often it's not cheaper, it's actually more expensive. Now, the main reason why uh, film companies like Marvel now like to overuse digital effects is because it's more flexible for the company. Yes, on the one hand, uh, they can design the background and the environment however they want before they shoot. Uh, and even after when they're adding in the effects, they can do whatever they want. But there's another level of freedom, which is after they have finished with that scene, if somebody changes their mind, they can go back, erase, erase, and do the entire background again and change everything about the scene. If you do this in real life, of course, you have to wait for like the carpenters to tear down the old background and you have to build a new background. You have to paint the new background. It costs uh, a lot, but also when you make movies in the US, we talked about this uh, when we were watching Twilight in the end credits. When you make a movie in the US, everybody is part of a union, Gonghui. Everybody. So we mentioned that the cinematographer, Se Ying Si, is part of a union, the producer is part of a union, the director is part of a union, but also even the small guys, right? The people who do the makeup are part of a union. The people who help build the sets are part of a union. And the thing about union labor is, one, you have to pay them. Uh, there's a minimum amount you have to pay them. But more importantly is, there is a maximum amount of time that they can work. You can't force them to work overtime without paying a very expensive overtime fee. So there's less, if you want, if you finish the scene and you change your mind, there's less flexibility. It takes more time, takes uh, more manpower. Uh, to do things in camera. But for the digital effects studios, it's different. When a film company goes to a digital effects studio, they negotiate for a package, which means that the studio agrees to uh, process these scenes uh, to whatever the film production studio wants them to do, and they will finish by this deadline. In return, they get paid this amount of money. Most of the control is therefore in the hand of the film studio. No matter uh, what changes are uh, demanded of the digital effects studio, the film studio only has to pay this amount of money. Whereas the digital studio uh, has agreed to provide a finished product. So if the film studio changes their mind in the middle, that digital product is no longer finished and the digital studio has to keep on working until the film studio is satisfied. This is why you will sometimes hear news stories about how all of these digital effects artists are overworked. They work 16 hour days before the deadline because their contract says we have to finish whatever the film studios want us to do before this day. So it's it's not very good for the digital artists, but it does give the film studio more freedom. And in fact, like this, I, this problem of overwork is even more serious for the video game industry because video games are, of course, 100 percent created digitally. So when you're shooting a movie with digital effects, you at least have part of the film made with real people in real places, and that part uh, is inflexible. You can't adjust it. Whatever you have, you have to deal with somehow. But for a video game, if the company decides, no, 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 we want to change everything, then the digital studio has to follow through and literally change everything. Uh, this is one of the big problems in movie making industry today, the ethics of using and overusing digital effects. So it's not just about the quality of the film, it's also about how well we treat 
the people who are making the film. Now for you guys, for your final project, um, you can also use special effects if you want to. The key to creating in-camera special effects is to remember it only has to look real from one perspective, the perspective of the camera. If you move a little to the left, it looks fake. If you move a little to the right, it looks fake. But to the camera, as long as it looks real, then it works. Uh, so you can use that idea to design special effects in your scenes, right? You can use location. Uh, you can use like uh, props or tools. You can build things for the camera uh, and you only have to do it once, right? For the camera to capture the image. As long as it works from this place once, it's a good special effect. But also please be safe, right? Don't jump around, fight, whatever. Be safe. You, in fact, you can also do digital effects if you want to. You can use like digital editing software. You can use Photoshop, whatever, uh, in a very simple way. You can adjust like the color or the lighting. You can erase certain things from a scene. You can draw certain things into a scene. Uh, again, the, the end result is as long as it looks like it's real, it works. Nobody really cares about how you did it as long as people think that it looks real. Uh, yeah, so even for a small under 10 minute project like yours, you can also consider using special effects. OK, do you have questions? OK, today we're watching a fantasy movie. Called Constantine in Chinese is Tanjing Si Tanjing. So let's talk about this idea of a fantasy movie. Uh, when we were watching at Astra, I mentioned that uh, science fiction, real science fiction is about the uh, connection between the present and the future. How do we get to this place in the future? Uh, but that most Hollywood science fiction movies are more like fantasy. They don't really care about how do we get here. It's just the future setting that looks very cool, etc. Fantasy movies, therefore, don't really care about how did we get here. The idea is to make this world feel convincing. When you can design a world however you want, there are more ways to get it wrong. If you can change anything about this world, you have to think very clearly and carefully about what you change and how those changes affect your story and affect your characters. Even though it's fantasy, even though you can design everything from scratch, the viewer still has to believe that these characters do things that make sense in this world. And so most fantasy movies, they don't uh, start from scratch. They don't design everything from the beginning. Instead, they use some kind of tradition. There is a fantasy tradition of like uh, based on like medieval Middle Ages knights uh, and fighting and like dragons. That's one tradition. You also have the science fantasy tradition we talked about last time. And then you have uh, the tradition of magic, right? Wizards, witches, supernatural things, monsters. All of these ideas uh, have a history. So if you're making a fantasy movie that uses these ideas, you automatically have uh, a lot of history and familiar ideas that you can bring into your story. Of course, these are just big ideas. How exactly you bring them into your film, uh, you still need to decide on the details. Uh, for example, if your movie has magic, uh, do you want humans with magic? Do you want monsters? Do you want to be able to control the weather? Uh, are all details you can choose for yourself. If you if your story has vampires, right? What kind of vampires do you want? Scary vampires, uh, helpful vampires, romantic vampires, um, zombie vampires. All of these details are something that a filmmaker has to decide on, even when they use some kind of fantasy tradition. 
it's very rare now to see a fantasy movie that has no tradition at all, that is completely new. And it's even rarer for those movies to be good fantasy, precisely because it's so hard to design something from nothing. Uh, the entirety of human history is material for making movies. Even if it's a fantasy movie, uh, you can draw on the past, you can draw on the present day, and you can draw on literature and other kinds of art also. You can even draw on like uh, things that people sometimes believe but don't necessarily exist, like aliens. How do people imagine aliens in popular culture? That is also a kind of tradition uh, with elements that you can add to your movie. Now, the movie we're watching today draws from a specific tradition. It draws from the tradition of religion, specifically the Catholic Church, Tianzhu uh, Jiao, the old one, not the new one. And this is a very rich source of fantasy. Also, first of all, because today most people don't believe in the Catholic Church, so it's no longer realistic. It's more like fantasy. But within the logic of the Catholic Church, there is thousands of years of history and tradition and philosophy and thinking about what does this world of angels and devils, heaven and hell look like? What does it feel like? What happens to people after they die? What is the interaction between people who have died and people who are still alive? All of these things have some kind of answer in the Catholic Church. So when a movie like Constantine draws on that religious tradition, they don't have to invent very much. They only have to modify and adjust and pick and choose which parts of this tradition they want to add to the story. A very quick example, which you will see later today, is uh, in the world of Constantine, there is another version of the Bible that is written in hell and looks a little bit different from the version of the Bible that we have today. In the Catholic religion, that's not a thing, right? There's only one Bible. Uh, but for the purposes of the story, uh, the filmmakers decided to add this idea uh, to help the plot move forward, to make things make more sense. And it feels kind of real because the Bible that we have today is not actually like dictated from God to humans and humans just wrote down whatever God said, right? The Bible is written by humans. Uh, and so in history, there was a process of putting together what we today see as the Bible. Which parts should we include? Which parts should we leave out? So the idea that maybe there is another kind of Bible that is used by people who believe in Satan uh, is not that crazy an idea. Since the Bible we have is already chosen, picked and chosen, why not have someone else pick and choose a different kind of Bible? So that's one example of how this fantasy movie builds and use, uh, uses and builds on the Catholic Church as a tradition. Now, Constantine is also technically the only um, comic book movie we're going to watch this semester. Constantine is actually a character in DC Comics. Uh, he's not a famous character like Batman or Superman, but he does have his own line of comics. He had his own TV show. This was the only movie version of this story uh, for some strange reason. I mean, I think it's a good movie. That's why we're going to watch it. But apparently most people don't think it's a good movie. <laughs> So you guys can decide about that. Uh, it stars Keanu Reeves, Jinu Liwei. Uh, so you already can expect his kind of acting style. Some people say that this is actually his best acting performance uh, because his style is kind of like wooden, not very expressive. He's kind of depressed, uh, which fits the character perfectly. This is the kind of person that our main character is. Uh, and now, as the Chinese title will tell you, this movie also deals with demons and devils and life and death. So like some parts are um, 
a little bit scary, just a little bit. If you remember underwater, about the same level, so not that scary, just a little bit. Yeah, so uh, that's the movie. Do you have questions about that? As we watch, uh, it, there will obviously be many special effects, but you can think about for every special effect, did they do this in camera? And if they did do this in camera, how did they do it? Sometimes in camera effects will even use like crazy makeup styles uh, to create that effect. Uh, or did they do this using a computer afterwards? Or is it like a mixture between the two? Maybe they shot some kind of imagery and then did something to it to make it a special effect. OK, if you don't have questions, let's take a 10 minute break uh, and the movie will begin at 1.32.